Sit back and enjoy this truly spectacular world premiere. It is finally time. Elden Ring. Oh my god. Uh, if you missed the news somehow, yesterday at the end of the Summer Game Fest, like game showcase, they showed off Elden Ring. Uh, this is the first time we're ever seeing gameplay for it. We haven't gotten a trailer since the 2019 E3 kind of like teaser announcement trailer. And yeah, um, it's coming out pretty soon. It looks amazing. I'm so excited. I want to just spend a video talking about it, talking about the trailer, talking about my excitement. This feels like such a special occasion and I, I don't know. I just I, I want to share some of that excitement with you guys and you know, talk about my thoughts as we go through it. So let's let's watch the trailer. Let's go through it. Um, I'll like I'll stop it as like things pop into my head that I have thoughts on, and you know we can kind of just like analyze this together. Not gonna be any crazy like lore theories here. If you're looking for like a frame by frame lore analysis speculation theory video, that's not what this is. Um, this is more just gonna be me being excited and like talking about what I think the game's going for and like what. I think FromSoft as a whole is going for and that kind of thing. So yeah. Also the crazy thing is I almost didn't watch this. I was thinking to myself, you know, there's no way Elden Ring is going to happen. It's like, they're not going to announce it here. But then Vadi tweeted, you know what? Actually it lines up with an eclipse. It lines up with an eclipse. And I was like, you know what? That is some shit that FromSoft would pull. They would show off Elden Ring on the same day as an eclipse, you know? And what do you know? Uh, he was right. They actually did show it off. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's <laughs> let's just talk about the trailer. So first little thing, this girl calls you the Tarnished. Um, I'm pretty sure that's like the player name in this game. The same way that Dark Souls 1 was Chosen Undead, Dark Souls 2, Bearer of the Curse, Dark Souls 3, Ashen 1. You're the Tarnished in this game. I kept seeing so many posts on Twitter about this and the Berserk inspiration. Like I know all the Souls games have some level of Berserk inspiration, but like it's never been this obvious and palpable from just the trailer alone and I love it. It's beautiful. I can't even express to you how excited I am about just exploring all of this and just walking around and just taking it all in because it's insane. All right, let's talk about the horse. The horse is big. This might be my favorite thing. I'm so excited about the horse. Also, I'm calling it a horse. I know it has like horns or whatever. So, you know, it's probably not actually a horse, but like it's a horse, okay? Anyway, we see all these shots of just like running through the world and it looks so open and vast and, you know, just inspires these thoughts of just exploration. And I kept having this thought pop in my head. I'm like, wait, is this actually an open world game? And I think it is. I think it kind of is. And usually that's not something for me to get excited about, in all honesty. Like, I've played my fair share of open world games. I've played a lot of them. But, like, this isn't an Ubisoft open world game. This isn't something we've seen before. This is a FromSoft game that happens to have this large open world in it. And there's, like, a big distinction between those two things. Just imagine, you know? Imagine, like, there's nothing, nothing like this has ever been done by FromSoft on this scale. It also just gets my mind racing of, like, what is going to be the progression in this game? How open is it actually? And if it really is this big of an open world, I think it kind of has to be possibly more non-linear than it ever has been with the games in this series. Like, I know there's always been an element of that with the FromSoft games, but this is the first one where it's like, maybe you can just explore, you know, and go check out that tree over there. Go check out that camp. You see that mountain? Maybe you can climb it. I don't know. You know, like, unless they're straight up Metroidvania style, like, locked doors everywhere, I think there kind of has to be a lot of open-endedness with how the world is structured and where you can go. And that just excites me so much. And look at this guy, look at this, this thing. Also, I apologize in advance, but Vadi did give me permission to make all the bell puns in my video. Okay, Pine, you can, listen, I'll take the lore and gameplay from the chat. I'll harvest that. You can have all the bell puns, okay, for your video. So yeah, this guy has a huge ding dong and that is funny. No, but for real, the vibe I'm getting is like, this isn't a boss. This is just like a giant creature or structure, some mix of that, just kind of potentially wandering the world. I think we're gonna see a really more dynamic and like living and breathing world than we've ever seen. All right, so first off, that was sick. 
I think we can all agree. So this is communicating to me and I could be off, but maybe. I think we're gonna see some like possibly randomized and like emergent gameplay sections where like, you know, maybe there's just caravans of enemies wandering the world, you know? Cause if you have an open world, you have to fill it up with stuff. And it would be a little too boring if it was all purely static, you know? The face in the ground here, very cool. This was the first shot of the trailer. This was the one where I'm like, you know what? This is by FromSoft. This is by the Souls guys. Another Souls game? I'm kind of feeling it. It kind of might be. Uh, these pot guys. Peak, peak character design. Perfect. Of the Elden Ring. And there it is. And there it is. It's the Dark Souls role. That's just what it is. That's the role straight out of the Souls game, specifically probably Dark Souls 3. This was the moment where I was like, okay, I know what kind of game this is gonna be. I, I think I get it now. Because prior to this, you know, gotta remember, I had no idea what kind of game Elden Ring was gonna be. In my mind, it could have been a match three dating sim, but seeing that role, seeing this boss fight, seeing the movesets, everything, I'm just like, okay, this is the next evolution of this type of game. We got magic. The cast speed on the particular spell they showed, still pretty slow. I'm hoping magic isn't trash. I hope it's actually good this time, but you know, let's keep going. And they will die. Okay, all right, here we go. We got the horse jump pad. What can I say about this? Um, so first off, a horse jump pad. This is weirdly video gamey on FromSoft's part, but like, sure, why not? I think it's fucking great. Okay, here, this is a dismount attack. So here we got him jumping off the horse directly into an attack, and it's so fluid, it's so smooth, it's so cool. But to take a step back, I'm just loving the philosophy that seems to be here of just how fluid they want everything to be. Because the Souls games on some level, especially the older ones, clunkiness has been a big part. And when you have moves like this, it seems like they're just going full steam ahead, taking all the speed that they have from the later games, especially Sekiro, and they're like, you know what? Fuck clunkiness. We're just going to be fast. We want to be cool. Everything is in service of this vision, you know? You got the bonfire, of course, you know? Like, they couldn't help themselves. It's from soft. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're the Dark Souls guys. We know you like bonfires. Here's a bonfire. But if we want to dig a little deeper, uh, one of the press releases actually said that Elden Ring is going to have dynamic weather and a day-night cycle. So on top of that just being cool, this particular shot does kind of raise the question of, oh, maybe you have to like actually find places to camp at night. Maybe you can like make the camp yourself. It's not really clear. Um, and just the idea of like just being in the open world and like it's nighttime and you're like, oh, I gotta want to find a fire. Amazing. Did someone say Berserk again? Look at this guy. What if we combine Artorius and Sif together and... You know, and we sprinkled even more Berserk in on top of that. This is the big one. We got multiplayer. He holds up the little cube and blue phantoms come out. And this is multiplayer co-op confirmed. Still not sure about PvP. Probably though, maybe, maybe not, you know, but probably. Dude, I missed multiplayer so much. Like, listen, I loved Sekiro. I loved it, but it really did feel like a FromSoft game without multiplayer at this point. It does feel like a big chunk is missing when you don't have that multiplayer element. Also, here's where we really start seeing the build variety on display, you know? Like they've been hinting at this throughout the trailer, but just the different types of armor sets and the weapons being used, I miss that so much. Again, I love Sekiro, one of my favorite games. It's so good, but not having the multiplayer and not having the kind of customization that the previous games had had was a bummer and this just seems like it's going all out harder than it's ever gone to embrace all of that okay okay so is this the coolest dragon i've ever seen maybe i i like how its wings are kind of like butterfly wings in a way and it just catches lightning and throws at you amazing but that's not what i want to talk about what i really want to talk about that some people might have missed is the horse did a double jump, guys. Not only did the horse jump, it does a... Guys, the horse did a double jump. I... I... The horse did a double jump. The horse did a double jump. That's all I needed. They could have just shown me that and I would have been satisfied. They didn't, they didn't have to show me anything else, okay? I was good with just the horse double jump, honestly. 
that's the highlight for me. I don't. <laughs> some people might that might not be a big deal, but like honestly, the horse double jump. Come on, come on. All right, the red-haired Valkyrie-looking girl. We saw her in like the very first teaser trailer. So once I saw this shot right here of her impaling the player character, that's when I knew that the next several months, maybe even years, who knows? I just want to warn you guys in advance. She's the next Lady D. People are going to be thirsting over this character nonstop. They're going to be like, God, I wish that was me stab me mommy they're gonna they're people are gonna say this i just wanted to warn you in advance in case you were unaware but this is gonna happen and move over lady maria lady d there is a new sheriff in town and she will impale you and people will get excited over that God, I love the armor here. And just in general, the armor throughout the whole trailer has been amazing. I do want to point out though, that this kind of reminded me of Creighton the Wanderer from Dark Souls 2. I don't know if anyone else made that connection. And, hmm. Yeah, the, the rest of the trailer is just pure flexing. Just pure flexing. All right, this is the shot where I was like, okay, Miyazaki, I see you. This shot right here screams Bloodborne to me. Miyazaki's like, you know what? How about instead of making Bloodborne 2, instead of making Dark Souls 4, instead of making Sekiro 2, what if I just combine all of those into a single game? You know, what if I combine all those into a single game, give you a horse, make it open world, and, you know, just kind of make one of the most ambitious games ever? Would that be cool? Would you guys like that? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Sekiro, we see uh, like a crouching stealth mechanic and there's also a screenshot that shows something similar, like hiding in the grass or something. This does really feel like the culmination of like all the projects they've worked on in the past. You know, we are taking stuff from Sekiro. We are taking stuff from Bloodborne. We are taking stuff from every Souls game we've made. These two shots here are leading me to believe, you know what, maybe they're actually gonna get magic right this time. Cause I think magic has always been one of my complaints when it comes to the Souls games. Like, they've gotten better at it. It always felt very separate from Melee, right? But right here, it actually looks like the player character is using some sort of staff, but he's mixing up Melee attacks with magic spells just like seamlessly. And I think that's really the trick here. That's what they figured out. So instead of just having like a magic wand that just casts magic, it's gonna have a full move set, you know? And you can just cast spells kind of on the fly and like, mix them in with other combos it's just it's like weapon arts to the next level at this point like FromSoft is just flexing you know they're just purely flexing like yeah we have some of the coolest character designs enemy designs boss designs you've ever seen yes our art direction is crazy yes you know we're kind of just the best in the biz it's just pure flexing at this point and i don't even know what to say i wish i was more articulate and i would say something intelligent about what i'm seeing on screen but it's just all i can say is Man, I. It's so good. It's just so good. Brandish the Elden Ring. Did you catch that? The player character just jumped. In the boss fight, he's just jumping toward the boss. Kind of like Sekiro, but mixed in with like every single weapon that you have. I don't know if anyone else feels the way I do about the, a jump button in a game, but I'm like, just the idea of being able to jump in a FromSoft game with all these weapons. I'm so pumped. All right, so we've gone through the whole trailer once. Let's spend the rest of the time talking about some lingering thoughts that I was having, that you might be having too. And I'm gonna start off with the one that I think is on everyone's mind. I wanna put everyone at ease. You were thinking to yourself, where is the poison swamp? You know, it's not a FromSoft game unless I have my poison swamp. And I hear you. Luckily, the official website does mention swamps and it's plural, so, you know, thumbs up for that. And there's even a screenshot of an area that looked kind of swampy. So yeah, don't worry guys, we're gonna get our swamp. Now let's also back up, let's talk about the multiplayer some more. Because one thought that crossed my mind is, okay, so they're doing open world. It's more open than it's ever been. Um, but how's multiplayer gonna work with that? Because multiplayer in all the Soulsborne games in the past has been very segmented. Like there are specific zones where you get summons and you can't leave that zone. Uh, like there's zones where you can and can't summon people. But if it really is open and it really is going to be as seamless as it appears to be, 
how was that going to work? Is it still going to be like, hey, you can only summon in like the dungeon areas, or maybe it really can be anywhere. Maybe you can just summon someone out in one of the fields. That would be amazing. And if you can summon someone anywhere, maybe they'll just do away with boundaries entirely. You can just summon someone and just, you know, go where you want. No more invisible or fog walls blocking you off. Uh, maybe that's a little too hopeful, but part of me thinks it's very possible given this new change in like design and scope. Also, speaking of multiplayer, uh, pretty sure there's gonna be PvP. So assuming there's PvP and assuming you can just, you know, fight people wherever. Uh, I want to remind everyone that we do have a horse and I just want to get everyone excited for the possibility of horse jousting gameplay. I can't wait. Right, I'm gonna look over my notes real quick see if I missed anything. Um, I think I got most of it. Wait, one of my notes just says these armor sets are so sexy like goddamn. I, I don't know if I've said that yet but if I didn't there you go. I, I agree with my past self there. All right, I want to talk real briefly about hype culture and this might seem like a weird thing to include in a video like this but I've seen discourse surrounding this so I just wanted to talk about it real quick. I've seen some people prior to this you know this trailer I've seen some people compare Elden Ring to Cyberpunk 2077 and I, I get the connection. I get it. You know Cyberpunk had so much hype, so much anticipation surrounding it but then there were delays and then it, you know ultimately you know what happened it really failed to deliver it was a buggy mess and naturally you know Elden Ring has a similar amount of hype I would argue more hype than cyberpunk so you have people connecting the dots and saying oh this is just gonna be like another cyberpunk situation you know another game that can't live up to the hype and my response to that is you know sure you never know it's never a good idea to get too excited because expectations are rarely ever truly met when you get really 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 excited. I say as I'm getting really really excited and however long this video is. But I will say this, guys, CD Projekt Red and FromSoft are not the same. They're not in the same weight class. Like, look, I get it. The Witcher 3 was really good. The Witcher 2 is pretty good. But like, that's all they made, you know? And then they switch gears to something weirdly too ambitious, totally different than what they've ever done. And on top of just like poor management, it's not the same with FromSoft. Listen, guys, I know, I know it's always possible for a game to not be good. You never know, okay? Sure. But this is FromSoft, guys. If there's like one company that I trust to like make a game that's, that's at least cool, that's at least good, it's FromSoft. They haven't missed. They don't miss. Some people will be like, oh, you know, what about Dark Souls 2? Yeah, what about Dark Souls 2? Dark Souls 2 is a good game. Fight me. <laughs> Let's go. But for real, FromSoft is not the same. They have such a good track record. And I don't think the comparisons between FromSoft and CDPR are valid because at the end of the day, yes, both games had a lot of hype surrounding them, but this is from software talking about, you know, I'm not promising that the game's going to be amazing, but like, I don't think it's fair to kind of baselessly anticipate a cyberpunk situation. That's my point. Um, if you're still watching, thank you. Uh, yeah, I really did just want to like share my, my thoughts and my excitement with you guys, because this is like such an event, you know, like I haven't felt this level of anticipation and excitement over a video game in and like, I can't even remember when. This feels like it's on another level. Just the gaming community as a whole all coming together and just being excited about Elden Ring. I think this is like a special time. And I wanted to kind of, you know, mark the occasion a little bit just by talking about it. I also do that if I didn't say anything, I would just get so many comments of people being like, what about Elden Ring? You know, there's a reason that there's a channel called Elden Ring News that has 55,000 subscribers. And for the past 360 days, it's been almost nothing but just saying, there's no news today. There's no news today. There is no news about Elden Ring today. And that has been your daily Elden Ring update for February 18th, 2021. Like, can you imagine that kind of channel existing for anything else? Any other game? Because I can't. I'm excited. If you're watching this still, I'm pretty sure you're excited too. And, you know, let's just, like, take a moment to just be excited. Have some fun with it, you know? And, uh, I'm looking forward to, to playing it when it's finally out. More videos very soon. I'm sorry, I have not uploaded in a while. I've been, you know, meditating in the mountains, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. Hope you guys are all well. Take it easy, and I will catch you later.